minister to you are welcome here, and we are so delighted to have you here in worship with us this morning. Um, as we begin our worship, I would invite our ushers to pass along our fellowship pads. If you could sign these so we know who it is who's here in worship with us, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, we do have a number of <coughs> announcements for you this morning. I'll go through some of the ones that are specific to this morning, and then I'll turn it over because I don't want to duplicate what is happening over with our friends over here. Um, but this morning, we are excited that we have an opportunity to own the covenant with new members. And so um, Camilla Thomas joined us at our 830 service. Um, and you will note that there are other people who will be joining us during this service of worship. We invite you to um, read their bios and then to join us downstairs in Fellowship Hall after worship for our hospitality time, where you can meet them and greet them and uh, get to know them a little bit better. So now, friends, let us take a few moments of silence to prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the tolling of our church bell. <laughs> Please join me now in our responsive call to worship. The Lord rides on in victory for the cause of truth and fairness. May God's holy justice rule the world forever and ever. May our hearts overflow with thanksgiving for God's goodness and love. God has so richly blessed us. Let us speak aloud of God's amazing grace. The Lord pours over us the oil of gladness. May we unite our voices with all of God's peoples. May our tongues praise the Lord with joy forever and ever. Loving Lord, we confess not one of us is perfect. Not one of us is good enough to have earned your forgiveness, much less your loyal friendship and steadfast love. We try so hard, but we still make mistakes. It seems impossible to do the right thing every time. So when we pray to you, help us to be honest and speak our deepest truths to you from the heart. Give us your guidance, even when we forget to ask you for help, especially when we turn away and refuse to listen to you. 
Help us guard our tongues against anger and steer us away from evil. May our love and respect for both friends and opponents bring joy to you. May we honor you, O Lord, and stand by our word. Make us firm in our faith through the strong name of Jesus, who taught us his prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. children to come up here, if you will. I have a little story to share with you today. Don't be, don't be scared. My goodness, what's going on? Do you not want to come up and see me today? No? Okay. It's, it's okay. Everybody has an off day. Hey, sit down on the floor level, sweetie. Don't sit up here. I'm, I'm trying to do this so you can see, see me and hear me, okay? So, I had a question about a, a little word. Oh, now Lily knows what it means. Okay, that's good. Well, no, she's gonna remember. Um, so what does the word grace mean? Do you know? Yes. You don't? Okay, so it's a, it actually is a word very similar to the word love or charity, okay? Um, it is a word that is a very much a Bible word, and it's a word that was very important, is very important to church, because grace is God's love freely given to all of us. If you heard the words of that prayer, you know how we said we're, we, um, we all do bad things, we all make mistakes, whether or not, you know, we try. Has anybody ever, been, is anybody here perfect? No. no. Yeah, I'm not either. We all make mistakes. And do you know when you join this church, when these adults get up and say the covenant of the church, they have to confess that they are all sinners. And the Martin Luther, the great founder of our church of the Protestant Reformation, he said that was good news. How in the world is that good news if we all make mistakes? Because we can learn from our mistakes. We can learn from our mistakes and we have a lot of friends. Yep, we have a lot of friends who can help us and who can forgive us and understand because none of us is perfect. So I wanted to, you to know that the hymn that we're about to sing, that as you're leaving, I want you to listen to it. It's called Amazing Grace. Have you ever heard that hymn? Yeah, well, and it's amazing because it's so amazing to think that God loves us even though we're not perfect. We don't have to make ourselves perfect for God. God loves us. In the, just because we try and just because we love God back. So um, that song was written by a man who, um, John Newton, who was a slave trader. Do you know what that is? He sold human beings. Well, do you want to say? Uh, he, a slave trader is someone who, who captures people mm -hmm. and sells them off to people who are That's right. That's right. He, he was somebody who bought and sold human beings from Africa 
into the American colonies, and it was a terrible, terrible thing, the trade, slave trade. And when he realized how terrible it was, and he realized how bad it was, he felt so awful. But he met a Christian who told him that if he prayed and confessed, he could be forgiven. And so out of that experience of amazing grace that even somebody who was that bad and that evil could change his ways and be forgiven, he wrote that hymn. So I want you to think about that the next time you mess up, that all you have to do is say you're sorry to God and you can receive God's amazing grace. So let us pray. We thank you, God, for loving us just as we are and for loving us way too much to let us stay that way. Help us to um, own, it, own our mistakes when we make them and to ask others for help in doing better. And most of all, help us to love and trust you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You can go off to church school. <laughs>
Um, Shannon is working as a special ed teacher in Trumbull. Um, I thought if you all should know also that they're both musicians and um, Shannon plays the uh, flute and Fred the piano, so Miss Tony is on it like you wouldn't believe, so there you go. <laughs> so we're very happy to have you with us. Um, Amanda Menard also is a musician and a music major that Serena Quinslin brought to our church to sing in our choir. And she pointed out she was only invited to sing in lessons and carols, but then she got hooked. And I said, yes, <laughs> lessons and carols is a gateway drug into the congregation. <laughs> so we're so glad that you're joining us. And now Laura Welch Keckley. Um, many of you know Laura. She's been playing the flute in our worship for a very long time. And um, ringing in our bell choirs. She's also a massage therapist in Newtown who has blessed us at the women's retreat with her gifts several times. Um, so we're delighted that you're um, coming to join us officially now. Uh, fun fact about Laura, when um, I first moved here, we lived in a rental house and she was the next tenant there. So um, she brought my um, misdelivered mail to me here at church when she first started <laughs> attending back in 2008. <laughs> So we have a very special connection, and we're glad that you're all um, here today. All right. So friends, hear these words of Jesus Christ. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go bear and bear fruit, and your fruit should abide. Beloved, Jesus Christ in baptism has brought you to himself. He has called you together with us into the church, which is his body, and now he has moved you to covenant with us and the ministries and blessings of this congregation. So we invite you to reaffirm your faith as members of the Church of Jesus Christ and to share in the making and receiving of promises with your brothers and sisters here in this community. So I have just a couple of questions for you. you. Um, do you reaffirm your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and promise to follow him in Christian discipleship as best as you are able? If so, please say, I do. Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people to endeavor, to endeavor to grow in your Christian faith through regular prayer, study, and worship of God and offer your time, talents, and resources to the work of this local church as it serves this community and the world? If so, please say, I do. We also have a question for our church members who are present here today. So do you, as members of this congregation, reaffirm your faith in Jesus Christ and promise to follow his example and extending God's gift of grace by giving welcome and nurture to these new members of Christ's church? If so, please say we do. We do. Will the members of this congregation please stand as you are able and read with me the words that our church covenant that are printed in the bulletin. As we do so, we join our voices with one another and with generations of Congregationalists in this tradition of owning the covenant that binds us together as one family in Christ Church. We, we are, are people, people gathered, gathered as the Congregational, Congregational Church of Brookfield. Brookfield. We, we covenant, covenant to bind ourselves to one another in our common faith in Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of life and head of the church. We confess our sin and are made whole solely by the grace of God in Christ. As a church of Jesus Christ, we freely covenant to be full participants in the worship and ministry of this congregation. We will offer and accept prayers for each other and God's world and seek to live as faithful stewards of the gospel. We will depend, as did those before us, upon the continued guidance of the Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth, and will work and pray for God's rule in this world and forever. This is our purpose and covenant in the name of Jesus. Amen. Will you continue in speaking these words of welcome to our new members? We, we welcome you with joy into the common life of this church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. Please be seated. In the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of the Congregational Church of Brookfield, we extend to you the hand of welcome. Welcome to our church and we welcome you into the company of this congregation. 
crossing pastors. <laughs> yeah. And we also have um, Bibles and certificates um, there for you, as well as your um, CCB name tag, which unfortunately most of us seem to have lost, but our welcome committee remembers to wear them every week. I know. Well, I don't know. I think, I think over time they, they have some attrition. So if any of you want a new name tag, just turn to the church office. <laughs> so friends, will you pray with me? Eternal God, we thank you for calling us to be your servant people and for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for sending to us these fellow believers that we may work together and hear your still speaking voice in the words and actions of our neighbors. Together may we live in the spirit, building one another up in love, sharing the stories of our faith, and serving God in word and deed through the life and example of Jesus. Amen. So on this day that we welcome you as new members of our congregation, we have a special blessing for you. We say, go serve our creator, and may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And now we will all join in singing the first verse of our response, Blessed Be the Tie. <laughs> hearts today to the truth of your holy word as we give thanks for believers in ages past who had the courage to speak up for the least of these our brothers and sisters you have blessed and honored us by calling us to be faithful disciples of Christ today may we heed his call to love and humbly serve the world in his name amen our reading today is from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 7, verses 24 through 30. From there, Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him. And she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast a demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. May God add a blessing to the reading of this holy word. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our minds and hearts as we gather to worship you here today, Lord, may it all be acceptable and even pleasing to you, for you are our strength and our salvation. Amen. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Who here today is not full of this line of the prayer? After the events of yesterday, not to mention the months of flooding and hurricanes devastating several states, 
after months of seeing desperate families of migrants get detained at our southern border, put into internment camps, deliver us from evil. After a week where more than one former president's family was sent bombs through the United States Postal Service, pipe bombs sent by one American to other Americans, with whom he disagrees politically, and more bombs sent to journalists and celebrities. Who here is not praying this prayer? Deliver us from evil. One day after a white nationalist armed with semi-automatic weapons barges into a Pittsburgh synagogue during their Sabbath services and shoots and kills 11 people. A gunman shouting anti-Semitic hatred murders people while worshiping God in the United States of America, not during the Third Reich, but here. Our brothers and sisters just over in Pennsylvania joyfully celebrating the life of a new baby boy. Who here isn't praying, deliver us from evil? We had no idea how prophetic the timing of this particular sermon would be when Jennifer and Tony and I began our planning for fall worship way back in June. We on your worship staff thought the idea of Looking at the real life implications of our call to pray the Lord's Prayer one line at a time, it seemed like an interesting concept. But today, today we land on deliver us from evil. I don't know about you, but I need that prayer today. I wondered if we, like the poor Syrophoenician woman with the demon-possessed daughter, do we still believe that Jesus can help us out of our mess? Do we believe that praying and living the prayer Jesus taught us can still make a difference? Because I want you to hear me now with God as my witness. There are demons loose in this world. There are forces of evil loose that need to be cast out. And I believe the Church of Jesus Christ is still up to the job. I think this story in Mark's gospel of the foreign woman and her daughter, I think it has a lot to teach us about the face of evil, what it looks like in action, how we live our prayer, deliver us from evil. By not running away from evil, but by confronting evil wherever and whenever we see it rise up. A wise friend of mine who is a much better gardener than I compared the evil of racism to that. You pull weeds when they're small. You don't let them take over the whole garden. So let me speak of evil and what I know of it. First of all, demon possession. Not something they taught me much about in seminary, I'm sorry. Not something we talk about much in churches like ours. But it's important to know that in the time of Jesus, it could have meant anything in the world from a bad case of eczema to really serious epilepsy or mental illness. We don't know what was afflicting the woman's daughter, and we never will. But what we do know is about the mother. I, sure you can imagine, but I have always loved that saying that well-behaved women seldom make history. The Syrophoenician woman was a woman like that. Her actual name is lost to us, and I'm sure it is not as familiar to you as the Good Samaritan, for instance. But I commend her to you. The Syrophoenician woman is well known in Bible nerd circles. She made trouble for Jesus that day. And she made history, but she was not well behaved. 
She had the courage to speak truth to power. She got in the way of a famous rabbi. She talked back to Jesus and changed his mind about something. Because this story from Jesus, I mean, it doesn't start out sounding much like the Jesus who loves me and you, does it? Jesus, with his kind of callous-sounding response to her desperate plea for help, he doesn't sound very open and affirming here. In fact, he was speaking what a lot of his countrymen were taught to believe, that God had divinely ordained a national policy of Israel first. That the chosen people were special, so special, they believed, set aside for greatness, unlike all of the other nations, the unclean races of the Gentiles. Those early Jewish followers of Jesus would not have been surprised to hear that a Lebanese woman had a daughter possessed of an unclean spirit because to them, every foreigner was unclean. And so Jesus speaks to her need, he says, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. In case you don't know this, to call a woman a dog back then as now is not a good thing. It's not a compliment. I don't like to think the Jesus that I know would ever be so mean. So some scholars think that maybe he didn't really mean it that he was just stating out loud what he knew would be his people's inner monologue, their talking points, their logic. He was making, he was playing devil's advocate, perhaps, to make a point. Because he sounds the voice of a typical Jewish man of his era who is taught different things from what we are taught today in the United States of America. They were not taught equality under the law, the Pharisees actually back then had a prayer that went, I thank you, God, that I was not made a dog, a Gentile, or a woman. So my theory is that Jesus was baiting the crowd. I think Jesus wanted his followers to notice and confront evil but not the obvious evil of the foreign woman's troubled daughter, whatever afflicted her, but instead to notice and confront the hidden, insidious, and dangerous evil that was the racism and xenophobia within their own culture, within their own proud history. I believe this because at every step along the way in Mark, by chapter 7, we've seen him break religious laws and defy social norms repeatedly. He is turning his world upside down. Did I mention he ended up being crucified in the end? He was a disruptor. So in that light, it is reasonable to assume that this foreign woman was coming to Jesus because she had heard he was different. She had heard he was a healer and also because he treated everybody the same as precious children of God, no matter who they were or where they had come from on life's journey. So it makes me sad when I think he said to her those cruel words, let the children be fed first for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to dogs. But I admire her, cause she, like a dog with a bone, didn't let it go. She loved her daughter too much. She stuck with it. She didn't silence herself. She persisted. And how shocked. His people must have been those listeners. Not only did she interrupt a great rabbi that people had come a long way to hear, she engaged in a real back and forth argument with Jesus where he yielded the point. 
and actually changed his mind. What an interesting model for us. Jesus, our Lord, the human one, he listened to someone with a different opinion and he changed his mind graciously and in public. This story still has much to teach us today. I believe this story still shows us the relationship with God in Christ, the relationship that we're invited to have in our own world with other human beings with whom we are bound to differ, with other human beings who have opinions, surprise, surprise, that are different from our own. That we are free and even invited to stand up and confront evil whenever and wherever we see it and to listen to the story and stories of those who are pushed to the margins and to consider changing our mind. Thanks be to God for this good news. Amen. Friends, will you join with me now in our preparation for prayer? this time of gathered prayer, I would remind you or point your attention to the names that are listed on the backs of your bulletins. We invite your prayers for these people um, who are all there for reason of concern um, in your own personal prayers in the days ahead. Um, as you can imagine is the case, we have a number of prayers to add to this list, both as we look out um, at our wider community and our world, and also as we think about those um, people who are lying on our own hearts and our own church family today. Um, so we, of course, want to be in prayer for um, all of those who were affected by yesterday's hate crime, uh, by the families of the 11 who were killed um, by the gunman in the mass shooting at the synagogue and those who are healing from injuries sustained, um, and also for those in law enforcement and in the Jewish community whose lives have come under attack. Um, we pray every week for wisdom for our world leaders, um, and this week is no different, and we are also praying for all of those um, whose life, lives were threatened this past week as they received those bombs in the mail. For all of those who have been in the paths of recent hurricanes and in the path of this latest nor'easter, Easter, as it has passed um, across New England, and um, prayers for everyone working with the waves of migrants at our southern border, both border law enforcement personnel and our government officials, as well as um, our own Church's Justice and Witness Ministries folks who are reaching out with hands-on programs um, to people who are in need there too. As we look at our wider community, um, we wish to share prayers of gratitude. Um, thank you all for the amazing job that you did in hosting the ordination service for Jane Moran uh, this past Sunday afternoon. Um, it was wonderful to have um, as many people. This church was full of people both from here and from her new church that she is serving as associate pastor in Reading. Um, and it was just, uh, it, as we said, it didn't, uh, it, we couldn't have written it the way that it turned out, but it turned out absolutely perfectly um, and with a great dose of the Holy Spirit. Um, we invite your prayers for our association churches as we gather for our meeting in Bridgeport this coming Tuesday. Um, prayers of thanksgiving for those who attended the justice revival in Simsbury yesterday and for all of those who will participate in racial justice training here this coming weekend. Um, and I wish to thank you all for your support of um, our team's efforts in the Out of the Darkness walk last Sunday. Um, it was a walk to um, raise awareness of mental health issues and for suicide prevention, to raise money for suicide prevention programs. 
Um, our team raised just about $2,000, and the walk itself raised over $28,000 for programs to prevent um, suicide and to raise awareness. Um, I would especially invite your prayers for some of our young folks in our youth fellowship group who are struggling um, as they especially uh, journey with friends who have lost parents to suicide um, over these last few years, too. Um, as we look at our own church, um, prayers for all of those who are continuing to grieve the loss of loved ones. We are especially lifting up um, Millicent Morrison and her family as her sister Marilyn, who we have prayed for years for, um, died not this past Friday, but the Friday before. Marilyn's life will be celebrated at First Church Danbury um, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, prayers for Donna King, who sends her thanks to all of you. Um, just so you know, we mail prayer shawls, so if you have somebody who could use one, we send them in the mail, and we sent one down to Donna King, who is now living in Florida. Um, she is preparing to start some heavy dose chemo this week, um, and so appreciates being wrapped in your love um, and prayers as she does that. Um, we are also lifting up prayers today for um, Kim Abreu, who um, has been undergoing chemotherapy treatments, and this Wednesday will give birth to her baby girl. Um, it is scheduled, and so she prays, uh, she invites your prayers for a smooth and quick delivery um, of said baby girl as she prepares to arrive in the world. Um, prayers for Doug Fisher, who is still in the hospital, um, requesting cards, not visits, as he is um, fairly weak at this time, but really does appreciate your prayers as well. And for Liz Lambert, who has also been um, spent in the hospital this past week. And for Carol Ryan's son, Darren, who's recovering from a recent spinal surgery too. Um, prayers for John Smallwood Garcia as we're trying again this surgery thing. <laughs> um, the first one was postponed, but tomorrow um, prayers for John and for Bryn who will be um, accompanying him and, and spending the first part of this week caring for him as well. Um, and some prayers of joy, friends. Um, new members today, it is wonderful to have you all here among us and to see your beautiful smiling faces here with us. Um, but also uh, prayers for Sharon and Carlo Santi, who celebrated their 45th wedding anniversary, and the fact that Carlo um, is back on his feet after having been wheelchair bound for six months, um, recovering from his most recent surgery. And um, prayers for Cindy Field's brother-in-law, Richard, who is cancer free, um, with thanks for all of your prayers. Um, that have surrounded him as he's been on that journey as well. So um, I mentioned there were a lot of them, but I know that many of you come with thoughts and prayers and people and situations on your hearts and in your minds. So for whom else shall we be in prayer this day, friends? Yeah, Joey. Valerie. Prayers for Valerie. Yeah. Wow. So prayers for uh, Wedion's dad. Um, Wedion is one of our... Um, uh, the mom of one of our former refugee families, and uh, his, her dad will be having spinal surgery this week. Yet. For Jim, John, Terry, and Raymond. For Jim, John, Terry, and Raymond today. Yeah, David. Joe For Joe and Betsy. Yeah. Okay. For Patsy, of course. And continued prayers for Evelyn. Yeah, well. Kathleen. And Kathleen as well. Sweet little. Yeah, Gordon. So for John, um, for patients and positive results for upcoming medical testing as well. Yeah, Tasha. Wow. Yeah. So for Mike and Carol as they struggle with um, Mike's Parkinson's and late stage and decisions that will need to be made. And I just uh, wanted to share appreciation for your prayers for my grandmother, who's been in the hospital over these last few weeks. She's back in ICU, and we so appreciate the prayers that you have surrounded her with um, as uh, decisions have needed to be made, and she's had surgeries and all sorts of stuff. So thank you very much for those prayers. Any other names to be lifted up? Then let us join our hearts and our souls in the spirit of prayer. Mm -hmm. Holy One, as we lift up these prayers to you today, we come before you with so many different emotions, feeling and thinking so many different things, and with some sighs that are perhaps a bit too deep for words. And we realize that you hear all that it is that comes from our mouths and also those things that lie deep in our hearts, situations, people, places, prayers that are hard to put words to. 
God, we thank you for this family of faith. And as we have covenanted with new members today, we realize that you make us stronger as we join together in this place. And as we have an opportunity to lift one another up, to uphold the prayers that are on our hearts together. As we gather, we also thank you for opportunities to celebrate joys, joys of Jane's ordination and her new ministry, joys of anniversaries and of healing, joys of prayers that are answered and opportunities to celebrate those prayers. And yet, God, we realize that there is there are concerns that are drawing on our attention, the attention of our minds and of our hearts. And so we have lifted up many names to you today, God, names that are there because they are in need of your presence in their lives. People who are in need of your healing, your strength, to know that you are walking this journey with them. So we pray for all of those who are experiencing today as a day of difficulty and challenge, for those who are going through testing or treatments, for those who will be headed to surgery, for all of the doctors and nurses who will take care of our beloved ones, and especially for all of our caregivers who are walking this journey beside them. But God, you call us not to isolate or insulate ourselves, but to look beyond the walls of our houses and the walls of our church to the world and the needs it holds. There is no question that the rhetoric of our world is of hate and division. And so we do earnestly pray today, God, that you would deliver us from evil and help us to realize that praying that requires action on our part. Help us as your people, as your beloved children, to work to further the causes of justice to speak with respect, interact with civility, and carry out actions of healing and love, especially on behalf of those most vulnerable. Help us not only to say that we believe you are active in our world, but to have the courage and strength to cause a scene when we need to in order to prove that you are active. Guide us in your ways of love, peace, and justice, offering us your amazing grace and forgiveness when we fall short, and helping us to recognize your love, care, and presence with us always. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, we have been richly blessed, and we have an opportunity now to offer back some of those blessings to the work of this and all of Christ Church. So this morning's offering will now be received.
our voices in our offertory prayer. Let us pray. God of extravagant welcome and amazing grace, help us to respond to you with joy as we lift up our offerings. Your generosity in meeting our needs and protecting us from harm promise us to be generous in return. The opportunity to open our doors, to welcome newcomers, and to share hospitality with the world is a blessing for which we are very thankful. Bless these gifts and us to your service. In Christ's name, amen.
and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with loving kindness and grant you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. And now, as we've been blessed by the love and grace and peace of Jesus Christ, let us pass that spirit of grace to our neighbors. Go now in peace. Thank you.